the treatment of uh, AVMs today is um, quite a challenging decision, perhaps one of the most uh, challenging decisions we have to make in cerebrovascular surgery. So taking consideration the CAT scan, uh, MRI, um, cerebral angiography, uh, six vessels, uh, cerebral angiography is extremely important so that one can evaluate the size of the um, uh, arteriovenous malformation, the shape, uh, if it's compact, diffuse, location is extremely important, the type of flow into this lesion, and certainly clinical information such as patient condition, and uh, that allows us then to look into all the possibilities, endovascular embolization, surgical resection, stereotype radiosurgery, or a combination of these therapies, or sometimes um, no treatment at all. In this case, uh, we uh, decided to start with the uh, embolization, and we always have to go to have a occlusion of the malformation. Um, and in, uh, this is certainly in this case, as the first step would be to obtain uh, the cerebral angiography uh, to confirm the findings from the diagnostic angiography. Uh, we use in this case a select system and a neuron, um, six French access, and uh, once we got uh, into the um, right internal carotid artery, uh, we um, uh, reconfirmed the uh, diagnostic pictures. We then decided to establish a pathway to the AVM. And this is something that um, I think that uh, is very important because of the morbidity of uh, uh, embolization a lot of times comes from access. So uh, having a mapping of uh, your uh, trajectory so that you avoid having uh, too many uh, catheterizations of uh, vessels in passage is quite helpful. You do a 3D um, uh, spin, and then you can use your, your uh, uh, toolbox to uh, select a, a pathway to where your um, uh, vessel of interest is, and this will then superimpose on your um, uh, roadmap, and that will allow you to, to uh, have a uh, basically a highlighted path for your microcatheter. In this case, we chose to use a Marathon and a Mirage microwire, not infrequently if we have a challenge. And as you see, you're coming around the band on this uh, vessel, and right at this point, we have a little bit of a difficulty getting to our plan. We catheterize actually a vessel in passage there, but you can clearly identify that and uh, uh, and reroute because of the presence of having uh, this uh, uh, pre-planned uh, uh, trajectory. Um, sometimes if this is not easy to do, uh, uh, like in this case, you see the microcatheter went into the wrong path, so now you redirect, and um, sometimes in these cases we may have to change and use a Synchro 10 um, microwire to uh, add a little bit more ability to uh, redirect your catheter and find your path. So a combination of um, using flow guidance by, you see now we pull the, mic the microwire back and allow the microcatheter go forward using just flow. And then at times uh, you may need um, to use the wire to um, access uh, your uh, uh, target, but that can be done with a combination usually today or in, in the United States of Mirage and uh, the uh, uh, Synchro 10. I try to get a, as deep a position as I can into the nidus, and um, here you see also um, a, a view of the position of the microcatheter in relation to the uh, AVM nidus, but also a uh, microcatheter injection is quite important. And uh, the setup um, uh, here, as you can see in the lower uh, left corner, is uh, uh, quite simple. At this point, we have only a, a six-inch guide with a, a microcatheter, a marathon microcatheter, into the AVM. So I don't use any heparinization during these cases, um, mainly to avoid uh, the potential subarachnoid hemorrhage when you push, uh, you remove the microcatheter at the end of the procedure with a cast. So that traction is something that I avoid at least until we have available our detachable catheters. Um, I do like the navigation um, of this microcatheter at uh, the marathon, and uh, um, it got us in a very good position. I have started using here Onyx 18 uh, in this AVM, and the preference here is because of it's a relatively the flow of this AVM is not, uh, in my view, a high flow AVM, and uh, this is also 
uh, allowed me to build, as you can see here, a very careful initial plug into the um, uh, proximity of the microcatheter without having much of a reflux at this point. Uh, the ideal pedicle that we picked as an important aspect of this decision making is to a pedicle that is as straight as possible as well as, as uh, uh, with the least amount of uh, branching vessels uh, so that you can allow yourself to have uh, reflux. And um, the other uh, important aspect is that um, you're able to, uh, the larger uh, pedicles will in general uh, allow you to have uh, a safer uh, catheterization. So those are very important uh, easy, uh, uh, initial thoughts you have to have when you choose the area that uh, you're going to be catheterizing or approaching the AVM. Um, the patience is a key and uh, the use of uh, blank roadmaps is, is very important as we gradually build. It's almost like a you have on the middle of the screen the appearance of the nidus. So uh, what we're doing with the cast uh, uh, with Onyx at this point is just to create, to reproduce the image you see on the middle of the screen by uh, gently tailoring your embolization so that uh, it will uh, feel that shape of the uh, um, uh, initial nidus of the AVM. And the key aspect of that is to know uh, when to stop, so the continuous observation of the AP and lateral planes, and um, know that uh, you are, um, I, I do choose, uh, as you can see on the right side as the model, the um, kind of mid uh, nidus view, and so that you don't get too much of artery or too much of vein, you're basically looking uh, to the uh, size of the nidus as, as much as possible as a model, so then you can gradually start to uh, sculpture this nidus using the onyx then. And um, the, um, the, the, the key part of this is uh, certainly avoid to have, uh, you know, too much reflux. It also is very important to not get uh, uh, too much in the venous side so that you can lose a lot of onyx uh, or embolic material on the venous side. Um, I think that the, the key part is recognize that you have achieved um, the uh, venous uh, side and then uh, interrupt your embolization and try to reroute into um, a different portion of the um, uh, AVM. I try to uh, wait between the uh, embolizations if the uh, uh, liquid embolic is going to the wrong direction. I tend to wait between 30 seconds to 2 minutes uh, prior to then uh, start a new uh, injection. Um, the um, very important aspect of this is that uh, you have uh, to co continue your microcatheter inside of the cast. If you remove the microcatheter from the cast of Onyx, the, there's a good chance that this material will then uh, polymerize inside of your microcatheter. So uh, keeping the microcatheter within the cast without pulling back uh, during the embolization is very important. Um, it's also very important to not wait too much more than two minutes because there is a chance that the material could solidify inside of the microcatheter. And gradually, uh, one of the advantage, advantages of these materials is that you can do angiograms, as you can see now, during your embolization and assess the degree of occlusion of this malformation. At this point, um, I feel that we have to continue the embolization to, until you completely occlude this AVM since you have a significant uh, slowdown on the venous side and uh, it's very hard for me to stop the embolization and stage this at this point because uh, I would be concerned that we have compromised the venous drainage of this malformation. So part of the uh, concept of embo cure is to uh, uh, really have certainly a lot of patience but uh, uh, be very uh, conscientious that uh, once you start in this process you you may not be able to um, stop this now uh, without having a complete occlusion, uh, angiographic occlusion of the AVM like we see um, on this uh, final views now. And um, it's, uh, uh, if this was not the case and I felt that I could not embolize anymore, it, this patient likely would have to go to open surgery to remove the AVM uh, just after the intervention to avoid the risk of um, a hemorrhagic complication.
We also like to say that uh, these AVMs are only considered cured uh, in our place if they have a complete angiographic occlusion and as well as an MRI evidence of no uh, contrast inside of the uh, uh, of the onyx cast or what the used to be the nidus. So it's extremely important to before you consider this AVM to be uh, successfully treated to have a confirmation with uh, an MRI. Uh, this patient did it very well, had a, uh, was discharged home within uh, three days. This is the MRI confirming the occlusion of the uh, malformation and the follow-up um, angiogram at 18 months. And uh, um, we don't necessarily uh, advocate removal of these AVMs if they remain occluded, so we'll keep a follow-up uh, with the MRIs uh, in a yearly basis. Um, thank you for your attention.